Howdy students! Uh, today we're going to talk about empirical formula. And empirical means uh, derived from data or comes from observation. And we use empirical formula calculations to basically do the opposite of percent composition uh, calculations, uh, where we've taken data, we figured out how much of each element we have, and we use that to figure out the formula of the compound we just analyzed. So let's figure out how to do that. Uh, an empirical formula really means the smallest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. Uh, we're going to talk later about molecular formula because the empirical formula doesn't always have to be what it is, uh, the actual formula. With uh, especially organic compounds with carbon and hydrogen in them, there may be many more carbons and hydrogens than just that smallest ratio. And what do we mean by that? Uh, C2H6 uh, is the, the formula for uh, ethane, and uh, but but really the empirical formula for that uh, can reduce all the way down to CH3, and that's what we would get out of a lab. The empirical part of this is that we would get CH3 out of a lab. We would we would analyze it, see how much carbon we have, see how much hydrogen we have, and do these calculations to figure out we'd get CH3. Again, we'll get into molecular formula later. Uh, so there's a little poem that helps us remember how to do these calculations. And it goes, percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, and multiply till whole. It's a lovely little poem. Uh, it even rhymes. Uh, but let's talk about what that actually means. So the percent to mass means figure out the mass of each element in the sample. Um, and if we have that percentage, what we do is we assume that the sample is 100 grams. That way the percentages equal their masses, and that makes it really nice. If it's 75%, then that's 75 grams of the sample. And we're going to use that, uh, that grams, that mass, to go mass to mole, where we calculate the moles of each element. This gives you the uh, mole ratio, but it's not going to be uh, perfect. It's not going to be nice numbers due to fractions. So then we divide by the small, uh, divide the moles, the all of the moles by the same number, the smallest number. And then when necessary, multiply by scub strips two, three, or four, usually two or three, sometimes you're going to need four to get nice whole numbers because you don't see water isn't H.5.01, uh, it's H, or sorry, H1.5, uh, it's H2O. We want whole numbers, they, they work much better. So let's do a calculation. I could say, what is the empirical formula for a compound that has a sample of 25.9% uh, nitrogen and 74.1% oxygen? And so, again, uh, here, step one, percent to mass. And so if we have 25.9%, we can write down 25.9 grams. We have 74.1%, we can write 74.1 grams. Now the second step is uh, divide by, uh, or turn into moles, uh, mass to mole. Um, and so we do our mole calculations here. Um, and we know one mole of nitrogen from our periodic table is 14.01 grams. Uh, we throw that in our calculator, uh, 25.9 uh, divided by 14.01, I'm skipping a little bit here, gives us 1.8.85 8, moles. For oxygen, we have 74.1 grams, uh, and we know oxygen's molar mass is 15.999 grams, again, depending on your periodic table. So we do that math, and we do 74.1 divided by 15.999, and that gives us four, and that's equal to one mole gives us 4.63 moles. Now, 
step, this is kind of step two here. Step two here. Step three is divide by small. So we look at both of these and we see that 1.85 moles is our smallest number. Divide by small. So we need to divide by this small amount. So 1.85 moles. We divide this and we obviously get 1. When we divide 4.63 by 1.85 moles, because again we have to divide everything by this, uh, we get 1.85. We get 2.5. Now, if we left it here, we would have 1 nitrogen to 2.5 oxygens, but we aren't going to want a formula of N1O2.5. Uh, That's not a pretty number. That's not a whole number. We would never write it like that. So we multiply both of these by 2 to get a nicer number times 2. And that equals 2 for nitrogen. And that equals 2.5 times 2 is 5 for oxygen. And we get N2O5. And that, my friends, is our formula, our empirical formula. So let's talk about molecular formula. Uh, that you're going to use empirical formula calculations, but you're going to take it a step further. Because again, especially with organic compounds, they're not going to reduce down to these these small, small ratios. There's actually like an important number of carbons and hydrogens and oxygens and so forth that are involved. So molecular formula is the actual number of atoms in a compound. Um, and molecular formula is always going to be a multiple of the empirical formula. MF is molecular formula. EF is empirical formula. Uh, so the empirical formula could be CH3, but the uh, molecular formula is going to be something like C2H6, uh, it could be CH3, it could be C3H9, it could be C4H12, but notice it's always a, a multiple of the empirical formula, times 1, times 2, times 3, or times 4. So how do we do this? Um, use the empirical formula to determine the molecular formula. So again, we did the calculations just like they did before. Remember, uh, percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply to a whole. Um, you find the empirical formula mass. Uh, so after you've done that empirical formula, then you need to figure out what that formula actually exists as, as a mass. And then you divide the molecular mass when it's given by the empirical mass. Um, and that gives you um, how many times you need to multiply each subscript by the answer from step three. So let's do, let's do this calculation. If we know the empirical formula for ethylene is CH2, we need to find the molecular formula if the uh, molecular mass is 28.1 grams per mole. So the empirical mass is 14.03 grams per mole, and we get that by adding the mass of carbon which is 12.01 plus two hydrogens plus two times 1.01 and that gives us 14.03 grams per mole. That's step two. Find empirical formula, then find the empirical formula mass. We have it. Now we know that step three is to give, take the given molecular mass, 28.1 grams per mole, and divide it by the empirical mass. Uh, maybe you can tell now, maybe you can't, 28.1 divided by 14.03 is 2, uh, give or take a little bit. Again, with these, we're going to round sometimes a little bit, um, but it's 2. Uh, so, we know we have CH2, that would be 14.03 grams per mole, but since we know that it's 28.1 grams per mole, we need to multiply all the subscripts by two. So we know the actual formula, the molecular formula, for all, this molecular mass 
is C2H4. And again, it's always going to be a whole number, always going to multiply by some nice whole number to give us C2H4. Let's do another example. We have an anti-cancer medicine. We know it's 51.40% uh, carbon, 8.63% hydrogen, and 39.97% nitrogen. The experimental molar mass is 210 grams per mole. What's the molecular formula? Well, this will come in later, but let's, uh, let's talk about it. Um, here's our answer. Let's figure out how we get there. So we'll take 51.4% carbon. So we again know percent to mass, 51.4. This is carbon. Let's do hydrogen. Hydrogen, we'll just set it up nice. Hydrogen is 8 point, and this is grams, 8.63 grams. And nitrogen, we'll put down here, first space, is 39.97 grams. So, percent to mass is done. Now we need to go mass to moles. Let's do it. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, we know carbon's mass is 12.01 grams. We get this from the periodic table. And one mole. Hydrogen's going to be one mole is uh, 1.01 grams. And nitrogen's is 14. 0 0.01 grams in one mole. So we do that math and we get uh, 51.4 divided by 12.01 gives us 4.28 moles for carbon. Hydrogen is 8 0.63 divided by 1.01 and that's 8.54 moles and nitrogen is 39.997 divided by 14.01 and that gives us 2 0.85 moles. All right, so now that's moles, obviously. Now, what's our smallest here? Well, we see here that 2.85 is our smallest number. Um, so we need to divide everything by 2.85. Let's divide it all by 2.85. And remember, this is divide by small, 2.85. Five. So this is obviously one down here. Uh, let's go 4.28 divided by 2.85. That gives us 1.5. So we know we're going to have to do something there. And if we have 8.54 divided by 2.85, oops. 2.85 gives us 3. So this is a nice number. This is a nice number. This is not a nice number. So we're going to have to multiply by, let's times 2 would make this nice, times 2. Uh, again, the multiply till whole, this is step 4. So then we have uh, 1.5 times 2 is 3. So now we have a nice number of carbons. Uh, 3 times 2, because we have to multiply everything by it, is 6. And then 1 times 2 is obviously 2. So let's write out our empirical formula. That's what we have right now. We have three C's, so C3. We have six hydrogens, H. Six, and we have two nitrogens. That's a nice six and two. Okay, 
So if we were just finding empirical formula, we'd be done here. But because we want to find the molecular formula and we have the uh, experimental molar mass, we know we have more things to do. So we're going to find the uh, empirical formulas uh, formula mass. So that's three times carbon's mass, so three times 12.01. Uh, well, 3 times 12.01 plus uh, 6 times 1.01 1 .01 plus 2 times plus 2 times 14.0 and that gives us 70.10 grams per mole. Now, maybe you can do this math in your head. I'm going to do it formally. If this ratio, uh, C3, H6, N2, gives us 70.011 grams per mole, and we know we get, need to get to 210 grams per mole, we can see that needs to be multiplied by 3. But let's uh, divide it out. We have 210, 210, uh, G per mole divided by uh, 70.11 G per mole and that is 210 divided by 70.11 gives us 2.91 or 3. So we know we need to multiply each of these by 3. So let's check that. 3 times 3 is 9. Absolutely. 3 times 6 is 18. Absolutely. 3 times 2 is 6. Absolutely. So we know that this is our molecular formula. Uh, now, we're going to have you guys practice on your own. I hope this was helpful.